So strength and conditioning coaches, you may hear the term surf the FV wave, and that's referring to F for force and V for velocity. And as a footballer, we want to surf, surf the whole wave. So force, think of a power lifter, their ability to lift heavy weight. All right, velocity, think of a 100 meter sprinter, their ability to move at maximum speed. Yeah, as a footballer, we want to be strong and we want to be fast, but we're not a, special, a specialist like a power lifter or like a sprinter. We've got to be able to do, we've got to be powerful. So like jumping and your first, your acceleration, we've got to be able to um, stand our ground. So we've got to be strong in the contest over the ball in, in a marking contest. So you've got to be strong, but you've got to be all these things. So we want to train all those qualities. And that's where the programming comes into it, which is my role to make sure that we're working on your maximal strength, your strength speed, but we're also working on moving things as fast as possible. So we're improving your speed strength and your speed, your maximal speed. Another key area um, and one of, something I wanted to address is rest period. So a lot of footballers, because it is an endurance-based sport, will apply how they get fit into the gym. And we, we don't, you won't improve your strength and your power as well if you're always fatigued in the gym. You know, you're not resting long enough. So that's why you'll see things on the program. At times I'll do th like rest, you know, at least two minutes or 90 seconds. And that allows intensity. And it's the intensity that, that that move to intent, that intensity allows you to get stronger. So if you find that you did a set and your intent, your mindset was to move as fast as possible, but fatigue didn't let you, prioritize your rest. So rest longer the next set. In terms of the fundamentals for football, they're pretty much the fundamentals for any athlete. So we want to make sure we're squatting regularly, single leg squat, because we spend a lot of our time on one leg as a footballer, kicking, jumping, change of direction, running, sprinting but also um, in a double leg stance as well, because you'll need to be able to do that in the contest jostling for position. Hip hinge, which is our deadlifting, you know, to really strengthen up your hamstrings and your glutes and your back. Pressing, so that a fend off ability to push your opponent away is really, really important. Pulling is more for body armor, so developing muscles that will help protect the shoulders uh, and protect your internal organs, because it's a contact sport as well as strengthen up your neck muscles. So pulling, whenever you're pulling an object towards you, like a bent over row, and then a lot of trunk work to be able to maintain good posture on the field. So if you're in a good upright position, your eyes are up, you're able to see the, read the play um, and be able to uh, beat your uh, opponent to the field, to the ball first, because your eyes are up and you're all standing in a dominant position. Whereas if your core's weak and you're slunched over, you'll be easy to push off the contest. So strength and power training, intensity is key. Sometimes we can track your power by how fast you're moving. So we can use devices to do that in the gym, um, just like we use GPS units to, to track your work on the field and how far you run and how fast you run. We can do the same thing in the gym called velocity-based training. And typically the sweet spot, what the research has shown is when, when, to improve our power, which is different to speed. It's a combination of speed and strength to improve our power, which is in the middle of that force velocity curve, we want to try and move at least one meter per second. 